Hello, hello, whiskey friends, far and wide. We are live. It is Tasty Tuesday. I am Eric, your humble malt muser, kicking off three hours of whiskey chat here on a Tuesday. As you all know, if you've been here before, if you don't, well, I'm going to tell you all about it. It's great to have everyone in the house. We got a full happy hour show lined up. And then, of course, the main event. Telex the Whiskey Tech, Malt Muser Whiskey Reviews, doing our Tasty Tuesday Telex and Malt Show coming up the top of the hour, going for another two hours. So we got three hours lined up for you, everybody. I will give you all the deets on what to expect tonight, but happy August to everybody. How's everyone doing? I see we got eight folks in already, which is rad. Um, excited for tonight's show. We got some really fun stuff coming up. Let me know what you got in your glass. Hop on that chat. Let's get it going. But before we start and I set up the table for everybody, I'm going to do what I always do. Shout outs to the folks who have already ponied up to the virtual bar. And first in the door tonight, we got Paul Montreal, Quebec, Canada. What's up, Paul? Great to see you. Glenn Cadam, 10 in the glass. Awesome to hear, buddy. Always good to have Paul right on his heels. It's Daniel, East Texas. What's up to you, man? How are you doing? That is a good starter. Mr. Gerbic, Jupiter, Florida. And we are covering the United States already here. We got someone in Canada. Awesome, awesome. Great to see everybody saying hi. Juan beaming his signal from Oahu, way out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Juan, raise a glass to you, buddy. Always great to have you in the house, Juan. Good to see you. Uh-oh, don't look now. It's Telex, the Whiskey Tech from Maryland, USA. Look out, world. My sparring partner on whiskey in the... Uh, coming two hours from the Telex and Malt Show. Great to have you, Telex. Thanks for stopping in the happy hour and saying hi. Aloha. Got it ready. Let's go, he says. Great, great. IC86, the suburbs of Georgia, smashing that like button. Appreciate you, buddy. I hope uh, other folks will do that as well. We got Paris France in the house with Greg's Whiskey Guide. Curious about your thoughts. Yeah, I'm ready to dive into this one too, brother. This is going to be a lot of fun. Bonjour, Christopher David's in the house. Good evening to you, sir. Sagacity in the glass for our friend Daniel H. He's messing around with some premium rum tonight, this guy. Dalwini 15 in the glass for our boy Telex, the honey bear. Nice start. Ontario, Wild Turkey 101, Peter White not messing around, going for Old Faithful there. California, Donner Pass Whiskey. Hello to you, sir. Chris S. is in the house. What's up, Chris? London, James Morgan. What's going on, buddy? And we got another James, our good friend James Chang, sending his signal as well. How are you, James? Trooper Henry, somewhere out in the Gulf of Mexico. He's got a back on the bank, he said. Okay, so he's back on shore. Good to hear. How you doing, Trooper? Dal Winnie 15 Distillers Edition. There we go. There we go. Highland Park Dark Origins. Awesome. Everybody's lined up, getting ready to go, man. Great to have everyone here. I uh, have a Ben Romick 10 as my starter here. But as I always say, we got three hours of whiskey chat coming your way. That's how we roll here on Tasty Tuesday. Happy hour tonight. It's going to be a special one. I'm going to uncork a brand new whiskey. The inaugural release here in the United States from a brand new distillery, Torveg. This is the Legacy Series 2017. We're going to check this out. Um, they are brand new, as I mentioned, from the Isle of Skye. So we're going to check this whiskey out. I'm very eager to see what it's like. As some of y'all know, I am not the biggest Talisker fans, particularly the younger Talisker. So uh, curious to see what's going to come out of this. I couldn't pass it up. Uh, I'll probably get into another uh, sample or two tonight as well. And then, as you all know, 9 o'clock Eastern comes around. That link will show up in your chat. We are heading on over to Telex the Whiskey Tech's channel for two more hours of Whiskey Talk. And Telex and I are taking things overseas, far from us, all the way over to India. we got two exciting Indian whiskeys coming up tonight on the show. 
Paul John Christmas Edition 2020. This is a special release. And the Amrut Atma. Oh, boy. Single cask. Yeah, man. We're not messing around tonight. We're going to have some of India's best. So I hope folks can stick around for that. As I mentioned, I will drop that uh, link in the chat when we are ready uh, for action. But we got... Let's take a look here. 16 folks in, which is fan freaking tastic. All right, y'all. Let me get a little more sip here. I see a couple new folks have jumped in. I want to make sure I give my shout outs. Oh, I lost it. <laughs> Far behind in the chat. No surprise there. Make yourself known if you are in the house, y'all. I might have missed your chat. All right. Hmm. Well, let's not wait too long, shall we? Hmm. Here we go. So we got a new single malt distillery, y'all. Here it is, Toravag. This is from the Isle of Skye. So technically, quote, an island's whiskey. Um, the exciting thing about this is there is only one other distillery on the Isle of Skye up in the northwest of Scotland, and that is Talisker. So this is a distillery that's popped up, maybe looking to give some direct competition. I'm not sure. Here's what it has to say. So it is bottled at, and this is exciting, 46% ABV. It is called the 2017 Legacy Series inaugural release. Um, it is drawn from a select batch of 100 barrels that were cast in early 2017 and aged in oak casks. I'm assuming that is X bourbon. Phenols on this, which they even tell you um, in grain, are 55 to 60 and residuals of seven, uh, 16. Non chill filtered and natural color. Boom, 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 boom. Checking boxes, y'all. Toraveg is checking boxes. Uh, they got a bunch of storyline on here. And because it's new, I'll share it with you. Here's what it has to say. There's an intriguing complexity to peated whiskey. We call this ideal well-tempered peat. This whiskey was shaped by the Isle of Skye as much as by us. From the two burns that feed us the purest island spring water, willful climate that governs the rhythms of the distillery. This is an endless depth to explore. There are many faces to and moods to peat, and so a balance has to be found between strength and refinement, between elegance and robustness. There you go. Non-chill, natural colored, 46%. As Ralphie would say, this is an integrity bottling. These go for right around $60 USD. I've started seeing them pop up a couple, well, maybe about two months ago. No age statement, but it does have the 2017, uh, you know, kind of vintage year on it. I'm assuming this is probably about five to six years old. Here's what the bottle looks like. Kind of a nice presentation. And that is a natural color. Great to see. Anything else of note on here? Yeah, cast in early 2017. I like, I like what they have to say here, y'all. The yeast and age solely in first fill bourbon. So on the back here it says first fill bourbon. So that's what we're looking at. Boy, they this is a this is an example right here of what I think every damn distillery should be doing these days. This paragraph on the back of this, they're not filling it with flowery language about marketing. This is literally telling you maybe even more information than you'd ever want, but this is great. Here's what it has to say. Heavily peated single malt whiskey made with concerto malted barley with an ingrained phenols content of 50 to 60, 55 to 60 PPMs. That's parts per million. Fermented with pinnacle MG plus yeast and solely aged in first fill bourbon barrels bottled at 46% with no chill filtration or coloring and a residual phenols level of 16 ppm. I mean, come on, could you write it better? What distillery is giving you that much information in that condensed amount of space? Hats off already to these folks. This is the kind of info that whiskey heads like y'all and me, we like to see, right? We don't need to go jumping around on the internet trying to find all this, you know, where are we going to find it? You know, what website's going to tell us this or that? 
even some of the integrity bottlers like Springbank don't give you this level of information. So hats off to Torveg uh, for giving us all this info. I am super excited to get this in the glass, so let's not waste any more time. Again, this is called the 2017 Legacy Series. Now, I'm a little skeptical about this whiskey for one reason. And that is that Talisker 10, which I know is a favorite of many, is one of, not one of my favorite whiskeys at all. The pepper notes on that stuff, it is not my jam. Um, so I'm wondering if this is going to be the next go, my go-to from the Isle of Skye, if that's something we'd have. And we got 21 folks in, which is awesome. Ooh. All right. A nice healthy dram here. Again, I am super just impressed and respect to these folks for being, they give you all the information you'd ever want to know about a whiskey on the label. People should follow their lead. They clearly are making a, uh, a bet here that flowery language is not the only thing you need to buy a whiskey and that they are looking for, uh, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe they put their finger up so you which way the wind's blowing in the whiskey industry and decided that they need to uh, be a little bit more uh, straight up and full disclosure about what's going on with their with their product. It's a change I would welcome. This is the color. And that is natural color if you ever did see it. All right, let me just say hi to a few folks who just jumped in. I do not want to make uh, miss anyone here. Couple other comments coming in as well. 40K for the barrel, he says. They could tell us more about the cask. This is true. I mean, although it does say first fill bourbon on here uh, on the label, it didn't say it on the box, it just said oak. Um, but, you know, we'll give them that underneath our big 10 Lafroy 10. James Morgan easing, his, uh, easing it in with its twisted tattoo, Highland Park. That's a good bottling. Yes, I agree with you on that, Telex, 100%, 100%. Looks like Ben Demon Hunter's in the house coming in from Calgary, Alberta, Canada area. I'm sorry, Alberta, Canada. I'll just say Alberta. Great to see you, Ben. Always good to have Ben in the house. Paige, New Jersey. He's got the Tor Vague port. I read somewhere that they shipped the majority of it to the U.S., so it's hard to find in the U.K. Master Malt has a lottery for it. Wow, okay. So we are definitely sipping something special. Yeah, there you go. The stream is so much fun. Best around I've seen. Thank you, everyone, for being so welcoming. Friendly. Hey, cheers, Gerbic. Slaunch it, man. Cohen, SoCal. Lock Lomond Open Special Edition on Closeout at Mission 2699. <laughs> That'll do it. You know you know, Cohen's always getting them deals in Southern California, Los Angeles area, man. Great liquor stores down there. Nice that they give the PPM in the mall. Yeah, totally agree with you, Donner. Totally agree. All right, y'all. Um, there was one other comment. I said, yeah, it's a lot different than Talisker 10 more worth Wolper Morvin like. Okay. Well, here we go. Um, this is a new one. And like I said, I think this is somewhat readily available here in the US. You may have to hunt for it a little, but um, we're gonna give it the old uncorking taste test here. So here we go. Toraveg 2017 Legacy Series. Ooh. So the nose, somewhat subtle. There's some nice kind of vanilla, some ginger notes. Pickle ginger, but they're a little bit rounded off and subdued. <sighs> Florals. Clove. Very, very nice. It's a subtle nose. Not as aggressive as I kind of was expecting for something this youthful. And you're not getting a lot of that youthful spirit note. Little prickly. A little bit of maybe, uh, what would Telex call it, white pepper? <laughs> I'm getting a lot of honey, a lot of fresh kind of herbal note. There's a floral quality to it. There's a little bit of a sharpness, citric perhaps, but everything is really kind of nicely well blended. There's a shortbread cookie note too. All right. 
all in all, it smells like a fresh, vibrant whiskey. I'm very excited to try this. And uh, we're going to do it right now here in Malt Muser Whiskey Reviews. Happy Tasty Tuesday. I'll launch it. Mmm. Wow. Very creamy, rich kind of bourbon flavors. Rich is not the right word. Um, thick bourbon flavors. I'm getting, and, but they're very much on the like sweet and well-rounded style. Um, creamy kind of vanilla, slight light caramel, maybe like toffee. There's a bit of an herbal note in the background. You do get this nice peat. Oh, when the pepper peat hit comes in, it's very rounded. You get a little sharpness, a little bit of citrus, maybe orange peel, orange rind kind of thing. But the finish on this is the balance is great. It's not too bitter. It's not too sweet. It's working really well together and a little bit uh, slightly drying. But balance is the word that I'm getting on this. Oh, this floral note too. Incredibly strong floral, rose water, something else going on. I can't quite put my finger on The nose reminds me of like a uh, like a Kalila 18. As weird as that sounds, maybe a little bit, you know, that youthful Ardbeg uh, wee beastie. But this is not a huge, heavy peat hit. <laughs> a little earth tone, too. Hang on, let's start another sip. Mm. Orange marmalade. I think what's really getting me the most about this is how natural is such a weird word, but how all of the notes are subtle. It arrives again, sweet, slightly bitter. There's a bit, but it's creamy. It's a creamy mouthfeel. White chocolate, milk chocolate, dark chocolate, salted caramel. All of these things are showing up. There's a briny quality to it. Then you get, again, the nice kind of bitter citric note. Again, it's like orange peel, maybe a little bit of lemon. The peat balanced perfectly with the citrus. Uh, it goes into a nice medium long finish mocha, slight amaretto note. The bitterness is still there. You're still getting some of that punch from the peat and that that kind of orange orange rind. I'd almost even say there's some cherry quality in this too. I like <laughs> I like this more than I like Talisker Ten. I know that's a sacrilege to some people, but it's like simultaneously fresh, but seems aged more than it is. It's an interesting nose. It's very Khalil-like, maybe even like Lechag 10. I think it was the right move to use first fill on this because there's, you can tell, I mean, it's a young, it's, it's obviously a young whiskey. I don't know how old it is. Um, five, six years, maybe, but boy, you wouldn't know it. And again, that's a testament. I think the first fill bourbon here is really, really keeping it punching above its weight in terms of the quality of the delivery. It's not a heavy whiskey. It's, it's, actually almost deceptively light despite the kind of richness that it arrives with it's not very heavy medium medium length on the on the on the finish this is good it's not you know there's nothing very very special in this it's not reinventing the wheel but it is a testament i think to like a nicely crafted whiskey it's a nicely crafted inaugural release whiskey for sure but they have they they should be proud of this
we can do a little water. Again, this is 46%. It's non-chill. It's natural. All good things, y'all. All good things. This is what we want to see. For us, you know, a little bit more seasoned whiskey heads. This is what we want to see. This is almost like a dessert peated whiskey. Not something I normally drink as, you know, after a meal, but the peat level is just like perfect. I know it said 55 to 60, which again, there's debate about whether or not you can actually taste it. That's pre, you know, that's basically what the peat shows up like. I think what they did the residual 16. It's nice. Right? This is what a whiskey is supposed to look like. Mm. The nose didn't change much with water, but the palate actually tones down the bitter note a little bit. Stickier. More vanilla, more of that kind of creamy marzipan. Oh. The finish on this with water, simply delicious. Sharp, peppery peat mixed with a nice chocolate, much more of a chocolate now, not caramel and vanilla. It's more chocolate. It's like a salted chocolate. The brine is there. Not tannic, but a little bit sharp. It's salty. That's what the sharpness is. It's salt. Mmm. This is reminding me of like if you peated a uh, Glen Cadam 13. I like it. Here's that bottle one more time. So running about 60 bucks, so not the cheapest whiskey in the world. Um, but hats off to the integrity quality bottling. Again, I cannot emphasize enough. The paragraph on the back of this is just information that you want to know about what is inside the bottle. It is not more about, you know, shaped by sky and all this. They, they save space for that. That's great. But this, they... They use the back of this to tell you everything you would ever want to know and then some about it. Really, really nice, y'all. Um, this is an exciting distillery, I can tell you already. I This is, you know, this whiskey, a very solid introduction. I wouldn't complain if this was poured for me. What I think is really, really amazing, though, is that they're going to be putting out more stuff. And if they stick with this formula and this approach, this is a distillery you're going to want to look for. God, this nose, interesting earthy nose. So again, summarizing, sweet, bitter, salty. That's the way I would put this. Um, I think it's a little bit better with water. It tones down a little bit of the pepper note, personal preference. Um, but you won't be disappointed either way. If you're a fan of the Talisker 10 and that kind of peppery, briny, seaside, whatever you want to call it, whiskey, uh, you will not be disappointed with this. This is subtler, but you won't be disappointed with this at all. Um, for an inaugural release, again, this I'm a, you know I'll do a full review of this eventually, but preliminary score on this, I'm 3.5. I think this is good. This is a way above average. So I'll sit at three five as a, and I definitely recommend going to even at that sixty dollar price point. Hmm. I'll tell you this much: Kalila twelve is about seventy bucks, sometimes eighty. I would buy this over a Kalila twelve in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat, it's not even a question. This is so much more interesting. Much more tasty. If I was going to compare it to another, the, the, so the other one that's kind of right in this range, look at you, obviously you have the Talisker 10. People who like that, I'd say, you know, do your comparisons. But if you're looking for a nice PD whiskey, this isn't as heavily PD as a Kalula 12, but I'll tell you it's much more flavorful. 
I found the Kalila 12 relatively lacking. Um, and that's not a dig on Kalila, it's just their 12. Um, I would rather spend the money on this. The other one that comes to mind is like a Maher Bay from Kilhoman, a little bit cheaper, a little bit more heavily peated, but similar profiles. This is a more relaxed version. Um, I'm trying to think if there's a Talisker I can equally compare this to. I, I suppose the only one would be the 10. And this is a little bit higher in the ABV than the 10 at 46. Uh, it's non-chill natural color. I think the 10 is neither of those. Um, yeah. Three, five, y'all. Torvag, 2017 Legacy Series. This is a whiskey to look out for you, everybody. Especially if you like the notes I was dropping. Um, Boy, I can't wait to try some of their other stuff when it comes out. This is this is exciting. I'm always excited when a nice new peated whiskey comes out, you know. But Christ, wait till Ardenho comes out, right? Jeez. But just to have uh, something like this, even you know, and it's not even an Isla, which is great, you know, something a little different. The brininess, the saltiness in this, really tasty. All right. Let me catch up on the chat. I'm probably way, 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 way behind. So forgive me if I skip over you. More salt and brine. Yeah, I agree with you on that. 100%. Hey, Bourbon Bounty. What's up, man? Coming at us from North Carolina. Uh, we are talking about a new Scotch whiskey that is only the second distillery on what's called the Isle of Skye. Uh, formerly uh, the sole own, solely... Uh, occupied by Talisker. This is called Toraveg. Thank you, Daniel. I appreciate that, man. I think the second release of Toraveg is out now. Good to know. Timothy Juarez is in the house. What up? We got 24 folks in, which is awesome. What's going on, Tim? I saw a great meme, Timothy, the other day. It says, why? Well, why do people who are named Timothy usually go by Tim instead of Moth? <laughs> I'll leave you to answer that. <laughs> Tell us is going three five to three seven. Okay, so we're right in the same place. Yeah, man, this is good. This is a good one. Folks saying hi to Timothy. Uh oh, you know, a little whiskey, a little something. Yeah, you and me both there, brother. Indy. Coming at us from Van, uh, Vancouver, it is not cast strength. No, 46% though. I would. Kalula 12 is a disappointment. I did post a review of Kalula 12 one or two weeks ago. Quick capsule synopsis of that. If you're going to buy Kalula, I highly recommend you look for the independent bottlings, of which there are plenty. Um, it's not necessarily a dig against the Kalula releases as such it's just that their 12 year old is overpriced as hell whiskey knows what's up buddy yes hell yes indeed love the sagacity yeah that's a really good one in fact to be honest yeah that's true fair i mean i think that the talisker 10 i i, I don't just because they're both from Sky, I don't think that there's some type of Sky style here. I, I mean, other than the like the brininess and the pepper note, I mean, these are still things you could find other places. I kind of agree, but for the sake of argument, like for those who love Talisker 10, I mean, I don't like Talisker 10 that much for specific reasons, just for my own palate. This one I think is I'm just more uh, accustomed to. Which one would you recommend, Talisker 10 or Kalila 12? Oh, God, I'm not touching that. We got 28 folks in. Somebody else answered this. I, I'm not touching it. It's a three-year-old whiskey, but is it worth 60 bucks that it offers? Yeah, so it's three. So you're saying that this was bottled in 2020. Okay. I did not know that, but it makes sense. They're doing pretty damn good. Ooh, there you go. Port Charlotte. Uh, I had one two years ago that was good. 
I don't think that either of those have dropped off too much compared to like five or six years ago. I mean, if you go back 10 years, then yeah. Yep, I 100% agree with Donner Pass here. They're the ones you want. Yeah, completely. That, uh, well, hey, you know, <laughs> send them my way. Send them my way. Cleela unpeated. Yeah, for sure. And we got a vibrant chat going, y'all. Amir's in the house. What up, Amir? Talisker 10, but Lechek 10 is the better of the three. Uh, you are not going to hear me complain ever about Lechek 10. We got 30 folks in, which is awesome, man. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out. And just so everyone knows, at the top of the hour, I'll be dropping that link in the chat. Telix, the Whiskey Tech, and myself, we are going to be doing two fantastic Indian whiskeys for two more hours of Whiskey Chat, including Paul John Christmas Edition 2020, an early favorite of mine. And I'm going to be cracking over the Atma from Amrut. It's port pipe, it's single cask, it's peated, it's going to be amazing, I'm hoping. At Malt Muser, when are you sending Tater Telex some Foursquare? I actually think I did send him some Foursquare, and we have a rum show coming up relatively soon. I think at the end of the month, I sent him a Hampton, the Hampton 46, and then I think I sent him a 12-year-old, the 2008 or the 2007 Foursquare, so we're going to do that for sure. That should be fun. Yeah, Foursquare is amazing. I am old and responsible. I'll be better than our. <laughs> Fair enough, Bourbon Bonnie. That is why we have playback. If you want to learn about some Indian whiskey, this will be the place to be. All right. Anyways, I'm really impressed with this Torveg. Um, it is cask. It is cask heavy for sure. But you are not going to be disappointed in this. Um, at the price point, it's got enough peat to kind of get you through and a good amount of complexity for a younger whiskey. Don't sleep on it. Hmm. I'm really excited to see what else they come up with. Hundred percent agree. Nilas. I might have missed what you were saying, Greg. I have to go back. Telex says, yes, yes, I do. I did send you a four square. Yeah, yeah, me too. I actually, I sent Mahir and Kapil a DM on Instagram, letting them know they are both uh, two of our kind of regulars here. They're you know, subscribed to my channel and Telex's uh, to let them know that we're going to be touching some... Uh, Indian whiskey tonight. I hope they're able to join us because I think they are going to want to be part of this conversation for sure. Okay. Hmm. I'm loving this. I'm going to get another bottle of this. I like how they call it well-tempered peat. <laughs> they're not lying. But they're coming for, I mean, they're clearly, they clearly see opportunity coming for, uh, you know, trying to boldly advertise where they're from, like Talisker. Uh, cheers, man. Thanks, Greg. And uh, for folks who haven't yet, take a second, subscribe to Greg's Whiskey Guide. Greg comes to us all the way from Paris, France. He's got a lot of great content, um, knows a lot about whiskey, and is an all-around great dude. So show him some love. All right. I'm going to go into the uh, the sample the sample box here for our second pour tonight. What is it going to be? I don't know. Oh, you know what? I actually this is going to be an Andrew Page scent pour. Let me see what we got here. Mm, let's see. And again, Andrew Page, thank you so much for the generous samples that you have sent over here. I'm a bit behind on some of them. As you can probably tell, I got a bunch of these little uh, canisters here. Thank you, Daniel, for posting Greg's, uh, 
Craig's video. Zan's in the house. Zan Zane, you should tell me how you want me to speak about uh, say your name. Oh, nice. Nice. That's great. James Chang, Bellamy Bourbon Madeira. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so I think, um, what's this one? Yeah, let's do this. This will be a fun one. So again, I got to give I got to give a shout out to Andrew Page, who uh, joins us every week from New Jersey, Patreon supporter, which I very much appreciate. My friend uh, has sent me a nice amount of really cool samples uh, over the past year, and uh, I have not got to all of them, but I'm going to do one tonight. So this is the one that we have. This is Alexander Murray and Company Independent Bottler. Glen Allocky, 23 years old. It is 60.9% ABV non-chill filtered. It is a single cask X bourbon. I think sticking with the X bourbon cask is the way I'm going to go with this tonight because I got some sherry and peat stuff coming later. Let me repeat that again for the folks in the back. This is a 23-year-old Glen Allocky single cask, ex-bourbon hogshead, bottled at 60.9% non-chill filtered. So this is going to happen. Um, <laughs> I don't know what else to say about this. Uh, Andrew Page. You are a gentleman and a scholar. Um, for those of you who are not in the know, and, and honestly, I'm going to tell you why this Glen Allocky came is the one that spoke to me. Uh, I was recently in a little bit of an email exchange with a good friend of our show who is on here right now, Cohen, uh, when we were talking about the Glen Allocky 10-year-old cast strings. And the conversation was really started in contrast to a whiskey that I opened last week, which was the McAllen Classic Cut. That was uh, total trash, <laughs> uh, in, in, just to be completely honest, um, and overpriced. And we were discussing a little bit last week about alternative whiskeys that you can get your hands on that are cast strength, maybe lower in age, but you know are giving you something of actual quality. And Glen Allocky 10 cast strength is a huge example of that. Each batch is different, lots of different... Uh, maturations on a lot of these. We were talking about the batch three, the batch four, the batch five. I encourage anybody to grab any of those. Um, and so I'm going to try the oldest Glen Allocky I've ever had my opportunity to get my hands on. So this will be cool. Let me see what else is going on here. Yes, follow Greg. Shoot Greg a follow. This is Greg's uh, Greg the Whiskey Guides channel. Show some love. He's a good dude. He's in here every week sharing his knowledge. Let's uh, let's give him some love. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> I'm hoping so. I'm hoping so. Hey, two wheels down. Yes, dude, right? I just noticed this, man. I'm 104 away from that magical 1,000. So uh, if there's anybody in here who hasn't subbed yet, smash that sub button, man. I'd appreciate it. we got 29 folks in. I hope you all are subbed. But uh, if you're not, share it with a friend. Um then I can go corporate and never talk to any of you again. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> you know, I'm going to keep it real. I don't give a shit. I just want to, now that I'm getting close, I'm like excited about it. You know, I'm like, shit, I'm going to hit that thousand mark. <laughs> All right. Yeah, this is going to be something, man. Good job, everybody. Well, yeah, you know. You know how it is, man. <laughs> Are you talking about me? Got diverted. Well, I figured, I mean, yeah, you know, you, I always catch you right about that time. Yeah, folks saying, saying hi to Swami, showing some love. Cheers, I see. Appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, right. That's the, that's the uh, MO, right? Yeah, no, definitely not. Okay, y'all. So here it is. This is a 23-year-old Glen Allocky at 60%, which is insane. Mm. 
prickly. A lot of bourbon cask, unsurprisingly. Yeah, once I go, once that happens, bourbon, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to a, a, a subscriber or a donor only feed or whatever, like some of these people do. You know, you can only you gotta spend money to see people. I don't know, whatever ridiculous BS. No, I'm definitely not gonna do that. Cool, y'all making connections. So I'm gonna just tell you the nose on this is like slightly fruity, almond, and heat. All right, well here we go. It's lunch, y'all. <laughs> that I believe. I had to try and eat just to see what would happen. That's heavy. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen a whiskey this old have this high of ABV, which probably says something about the amount of barrels this was matured with. Like it has to, right? I mean, usually your ABV is going down at this point. 60.9. It's heavy. A lot of like nice cereal grain barley notes, bourbon cask, definitely showing its influence. Long finish. Malted milk balls, root beer. Interesting. I'm going to go for water. Not blown away on the neat, but it's also very hot. So let's just be real. I'm going to do four drops. 60.9%. Let's show some respect to this whiskey, y'all. Super chats. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, I mean, yeah, that'll be cool. We'll see how it goes. Wasn't bitter. We'll see what happens with water. Oh, shit. Winston. Winston the whiskey cat causing trouble. Where are you going? You know, he's always got to do something when I'm on the show. Amir is in Pasadena. Okay. Uh, we're all just sitting here jealous of our Southern California friends who have just great whiskey stores. I think I, I for those of you who follow me on Instagram, I had a great experience. So I was out in California for about six weeks, uh, just south of Los Angeles, October, November last year, and uh, went to a place that I go to often, uh, or used to go to often when I lived in DC, because they would ship to me, it was called High Times Whiskey Cellars. I walk in, and they <laughs> the first thing I see is a display of them selling the Lagavulin 9 uh, Game of Thrones edition for $24.99 a piece. And I was like, oh yes, I'm in Southern California, where the whiskey is cheap and plentiful. It was fantastic. I drank the entire bottle while I was out there. Clinalki will take place previously, recently held by the deceased Glendronic. If I could give you know thumbs up to that comment, I would. You are absolutely right. Do you feed your cat whiskey? No. <laughs> well, Winston is the whiskey cat in Prince. In uh, it's nominal. It's name only. He uh, he is not interested in whiskey. Um, he's much more interested in anything that tastes like tuna or chicken or, you know, shit like that. He's not interested in whiskey. I could try maybe at some point, but I don't think he's going to be into it. Can't have pets where I live. So I vicariously live through your pets. Oh, cheers. I see. Yeah. I would, uh, you know, let him make his, his, uh, his appearance, but he, uh, he took off on me. I think he sees a fly. So he's sitting in the window way out there so it goes okay anyways i'm dragging my feet here we, we put some water on this it's incredible how fresh this smells given the fact that it's 23 years old you do get some of that musty old old oak kind of note in this it 
This is true. He does guard the carcasses back there. There's a nice old musty oak note, like almost like a, you know, uh, some bourbons have it, even though it's not old, Booker's does. You know, you get a little bit of that dusty old bourbon cast quality to it. A lot of just rich honey, toffee, caramel notes, but fresh, very fresh. Oh, there he is. Winston, come here. Come here. Some folks want to say hi. Come here. Oh, yeah. Winston the Whiskey Cat. Here he is. He's shown up. Well, should we see what he thinks about the Glenalki? I don't assume he's going to like it. <laughs> he's turning his face. He's like, hi, buddy. Glad you came in. You must have heard us talking about you. Anyways. Yeah, there's like a almost like a little bit of a sawdust note to this, but it has that fresh. It has this fresh, vibrant note, and totally. Hey, Winston, George is showing you some love. <laughs> His indifference. Sorry, I see. Yeah, Garch's bed for sure. <laughs> True. Hmm. All right. Here we go. Hmm. Holy shit. This is so much better with water. Who was it? Andrew Page that said that? Oh my God. This is a completely different whiskey. So much richer. Chocolate. Cherry. Fantastic. Still has a lot of a, a character. Edgy. But my God, I get it. In fact, I did four drops. I'm going to do more. And again, this is another example, folks. Like, you know, I never present myself as uh, like uh, that Patterson fool from Dalmore who tries to tell you how to drink whiskey. But I will say this. If you have a whiskey that just seems like your intuition says it should be different than, than you're getting, especially older stuff, and be delicate with it, but add water. I just put three more drops on this, and I'll tell you, this has turned into a completely different whiskey. It's fantastic. Wow. This is great. Andrew Page, you hit the nail on the head. What a different experience. Dog, dogs have owners, cats have staff. Uh, that's 100% real. There's a there's an old Turkish, I don't know, I mean, this is going to sound pretentious. I don't mean it. I spent some time in Istanbul you know, where cats are considered like quasi-sacred. So there's, there are fucking cats everywhere. And I mean everywhere. You're sitting in a restaurant, cats walking in the door off the street. You're walking home from the bar, cats are hanging off the off the uh, rafters of, uh, or you know, the, the balconies and stuff like that. They're everywhere. You go into a public park in, in Istanbul, Turkey, they're everywhere. And so uh, there's an old Turkish proverb about it where they're like, um, you know, Again, I'm not a dog hater, so this isn't a, about offense. It just is what it is. They said, like, you know, dogs believe that humans are God, but cats know better. <laughs> I, 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 it's 100% true based on their personalities. Um, and especially if you spend any time in Istanbul, which is the uh, city of cats, they, um, the, the city itself actually pays to take care of any feral cats. They, they spay and neuter, all of that. And they're everywhere. And I mean everywhere. You walk around the streets of Istanbul, you're going to run into cats walking around. And they walk around like they own the place because they do. Um, they literally do. They're, I, I'll never forget. I, it was a late night. I had drank a bunch of Raka, which is like kind of a Zambuca-flavored anise-heavy 
Turkish. It's the drink of Turkey. Not one of my favorite things. And I, I was in this whole, uh, this restaurant, you know, with like the very Orthodox Muslim place. It was, must've been like midnight and I'm just like on the street, you know, it's street level. And I literally was like waiting for my food and I look over this fucking cat just like walked in off the street, just stood next to me and just like, sup, didn't ask for food. Didn't, uh, you know, try to get anything, just, just hung out next to me and then walked out on the street and I, and I'm not kidding you. Everybody that walked by, there must've been two or three people that walked by. They all stop and they play with it and all this, and they're considered quasi sacred. So it was, it's quite an experience. I don't know if there's equivalent cities around the world with other animals, but, uh, in Turkey, in Istanbul, there's, it's very much the cat thing and there's cat art on the walls and stuff. You go into a park, man, they're just fucking everywhere. They're just hanging, <laughs> they're just hanging out, sunbathing or sitting on your bench, like whatever. And everybody respects them, you know. Um, there were there were some like feral dogs too that people took care of. So I'm not gonna act like it wasn't that, but yeah, it's an interesting, uh, interesting contrast. Uh just check that they have the tour of egg. Yes, grab it. Not going to blow your mind, but worth it for the price. Good to see you, Gary, who comes in here from uh, San Francisco. Oh, I hope you can join us for that. Of course, that says my dog was once a smell. I have the clan that has burnt his nose. <laughs> That's great, dude. That's great. That's great. Hell yeah, Chris. Uh, what else is going on? Anybody, this dogs too are a community care problem. Yes, they are. Yeah, there are. There were a lot of dogs. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, there were. I mean, the cat thing is more of like culturally prominent. It seems there, but yeah, the dog thing is real. There were. There, I met. I met a couple of wild dogs, which scared me a little bit at first. But you know, agreed. Yeah. Yeah, this is okay. I mean, I think the water does this a lot. I think this this does uh, this does some justice to it. But I, yeah, I mean, it's not amazing, right? I mean, yeah, I suppose you want a little bit more for a twelve year old. I'm sorry, twenty three year old. But the water really makes a difference. Yeah, dude, for real, for real. I was at Galata Tower, and there were like two dogs that were like pacing around the tower <laughs> and you know, there's like all these tourists there and everybody's just like, what the fuck do we do? <laughs> Cause these dogs were like menacing, but they're not, but they looked it. And if they're, especially people from the United States, you know, where you're like MO when you see a dog that you don't know is to like freak out. I mean, these dogs were getting really aggravated and yeah, it was a whole, it was a whole thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> My dog is attracted to Chieftain's Morlock for some reason. <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, you know, serve responsibly, I guess I would say. Anyways, y'all, um, I appreciate everybody for hanging in here, man. We got still got 21 in, which is awesome. And, you know, do smash that thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, do so. I'm, I'm less than a hundred away from the uh, much... I guess sought after 1,000 subscriptions, which is cool. Uh, one thing I will share, so Telex has got the link up. I mean, we are not gonna start until uh, the top of the hour, but just for a reminder for folks, you know, Telex and I will be keeping the Tasty Tuesday stuff going. Um, one thing everybody should know, I will be gone next week. So if Telex goes live, it'll be his deal. I'm going camping over in Michigan. So I will be offline. But after that, we'll be, you know, Telex and I have been taking a couple weeks off here and there. It's summertime, y'all. It's past COVID. Don't hate us. But uh, we will be back in action um, on a consistent basis after that. So let me drop the link in the chat here. Telex and I will be live in relatively short order. Um, just a couple minutes. And we are doing two. Yeah, good point. Good point, Gary. Not so sure. Yeah, this. 
seems like things are getting a little tenuous again. Um, but Telex and I tonight, so we got a really, really fun show. I've actually been looking forward to this one for at least a month or two. Um, okay, so Telex confirmed we will have, he will have his free for all show next week. So yeah, I will be offline, but nine central, y'all can uh, hang with my boy Telex at Whiskey Tech. He's going to be doing his thing. Um, but tonight, we got a show coming up tonight that I've been really looking forward to, and I hope you all can join us. Link is in the chat. I will post it a few more times before we go live. But we are doing two just exciting Indian whiskeys. And if you haven't been into the Indian single malts, this is a great night to learn about some of their, I think I would argue, premium releases. We are doing the, uh, the Amroot. This is the Atma. It is the single cask. It is bottled at near cast strength or at cast strength. It is port pipe finished. We're going to be checking this out. We are also going to do something that I have been blown away by earlier this year. Paul John Christmas edition. Um, they do a Christmas edition release every year. This is at 46%. This is ex bourbon, Oloroso, virgin oak, and peated cask. All in one. Can it be good? You'll find out. So we're going to be diving into these two whiskeys tonight. I'm very much looking forward to it. Um, link is in the chat, and I will make sure to drop that a few more times before we head out. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to finish the rest of this Glenallocky. Peter White says he's got lots of Atama, and it's our Amroot, and it's a personal favorite. That's great. Ah, thank you, Whiskey Nose. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you. Yeah, like I said, uh, I don't know who mentioned I think it was Swami mentioned it earlier. We're, we're almost, yeah, we're being close to 100 away from that uh, 1,000 subs. So appreciate everybody, man, for the uh, for the love and support. It's always cool. Mm. Drinking whiskey is much more fun with uh, good whiskey friends. And Silverlock Whiskey, one of my friends here in Chicagoland, is in the house saying, Happy Tasty Tuesday. What's up, buddy? Great to see you. This is true. So the 2019 is a PX. It's only a PX finish. I actually have a bottle. The 2018, you really can't get in the United States, but you can get the 2019. It's good, but I think the 2020 is much, much better. So I'm very, very excited to uh, taste that tonight with Telex. Um, this is going to be a really fun show. Cast strength. Oh, the unpeated cast strength. Okay. No. I wouldn't say it is. Um, generally speaking, what I notice with Cavalan is much more cask influence. I think that, and I, I don't want to categorize all Indian whiskey, but I would say the Paul John and Amrut stuff that I've had, I have not had Rampur. I find generally C has much more of a balance between cask and spirit. Whereas Cavalan, I feel, is like much more on the cask side um, and not in a bad way <laughs> at all. Uh, they choose exceptional cask, maybe some of the best casks in the, uh, in the industry. Hey, buddy, I know you want attention. I know. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, I wouldn't say that. I think you're getting a really interesting mix. If you're interested in ever trying an Indian single malt, my, my favorite recommendation go to is Amroot Fusion. This is something you can get relatively easily around the United States and probably internationally. It'll cost you about $65, maybe a little bit less. It is a, um, a whiskey that seeks to blend essentially, uh, scotch and Indian barley together. So you're getting a nice mix of both of those flavors. And you can kind of, you can kind of tell to some degree it's peated. It's delicious. It also has some sherry cask influence. It's, it's really wonderful. So keep an eye out for that one. Um, the Amber fusion is really an exceptional. Whiskey. In fact, I'm going to drop a full review of that in less than two weeks. Um, so keep an eye out for that, but there's plenty of other whiskey tubers who have talked about this whiskey. It's honestly one of my favorites. And 
I, I wouldn't say that there's a signature signature style of am of of Indian whiskey per se, but because of the elevation there, younger stuff is doing more with the casks, and and it's definitely worth checking out. Um, I'm gonna drop this link one more time because you know I see a lot of love for the Amber Fusion, which is great. Um, I'm gonna drop this link. We are about to start off the Telex and Malt Show, uh, so I hope folks can join us. And if not, like I said, I'll be gone next week, so I'll see you guys for happy hour on the 17th of August. Is that right? Yeah, 17th of August. Um, I'll have something else to taste, uh, but I'm looking forward to drinking uh, a couple more drives with y'all tonight. So everybody stay safe, be well if I don't see you. If not, I will catch you on the flip side. Uh, Telex is going to be going live shortly. Link is in the chat. See you guys then. Launcher.